Hey everyone, Ryan here with Dark Arrow. We recently finished the positive G-load test on the Dark Arrow 1 prototype wing. So today I'm gonna walk you through how we set it up. start we needed a way to simulate how the wing attaches to the fuselage. We did this by making this wooden stand. We could have chose steel to make it out of but wood's more cost effective, it's easier to work with for us and this shop is better set up for woodworking. The one downside about wood however is it's a lot softer than steel so we had to pay close attention to where the loads were going and then beef those areas up to prevent compression failure. We installed these aluminum plates with a steel tube running in between them to help transfer the load from the four bolts holding the wing into the wood. These bolts are a lot higher grade than your standard cheap hardware bolts as all the load from the test transfers through them and into the test stand as well as they're pretty long to make it through the test stand. With all the calculations and safety factors we put into the wood test stand, it held up great during the test and didn't give us any false alarms by creaking or cracking. Let's talk about how the wing is oriented relative to the stand. As you see it right now, the wing is sitting inverted. This is because we want to simulate aerodynamic loads that would create positive G's on the aircraft. Or in other words, force moving from the bottom wing skin towards the top wing skin. For the test, the wing is inverted because we want to use gravity to simulate these loads. First, we had to make sure the wing was leveled in the roll axis. This is because we wanted to make sure the force we applied to the wing was in the correct direction and equal on both wings. There's a variety of flight attitudes that would create high G loads on the wing. The wing is pitched down to simulate these loading conditions and to test the structure in its worst case scenario. Besides the center stand, we needed a way to support the wing as we applied loads to prevent any asymmetrical loading cases or catch the wing in the event of a test failure. To do so, we place jack stands under the wings. Some of the other wing loading tests you may have seen have their supporting structure by the wing tip, but the Dark Arrow One's wing structure tapers from the root to the tip, so we place the jack stand here where the structure is sufficient enough to support the load. To use these jacks, we had to make hard points to attach to the wing to disperse the reaction load from the jack itself. To do so, we machined out this foam to not only match the contour of the airfoil, but counteract the dihedral of the wing to give us a level surface. This foam is then supported by plywood and a 2x4 frame. The actual handle for the jack is pointed to the back of the wing so that when you're cranking the jack up and down, you don't have to be right under the load itself. By the way, these uh, wedges under here, that's just temporary. We were doing some shop cleaning. Those weren't there during the test, so you can disregard those. One other thing to note about these jacks is that they're mechanical scissor jacks, which allows us better control of the position of the jack as compared to what control you would have with a hydraulic jack. Moving to the top of the test, you can see we machined out more foam. The purpose of this foam is to give us a level surface in the pitch axis, and then better disperse the loads from the bags that we put on the foam, and then eliminate any possibility of point loading the wing. This foam was attached to the wing using double-sided tape that runs cordwise along the wing. Uh, if it were to run, run span-wise, there's a possibility that it would slightly aid the structure under tension. The one downside to load testing your wing using sandbags is that the test can be unstable. We do have a level surface here in the pitch axis, but the wing still does have a dihedral to it, so the bays could start sliding in this direction. If the structure of the wing were to fail, that could cause the bags to start to topple over and in return potentially ruin your control surfaces or other areas of the wing that you could study if you were able to get the bags off safely. For the bags themselves, we use two main types of bags. These sand bags, which we've had in the shop for a while, and then these concrete bags, which we bought from Home Depot. You'll notice the concrete bag is wrapped in pallet wrap or saran wrap, and that's because they're pretty leaky and we didn't want to get the shop all dirty or drop any concrete dust or rocks on the wing itself. That saran wrap doubled as a sticky surface around the bag um, and prevented sliding or shifting of the bags themselves. Uh, you'll see in some of the pictures, 
we use smaller plates. Uh, the purpose of these was just to make sure that our span wise load distribution was pretty uniform and smooth as you move from root to tip. The purpose of the tape lines on the foam is to create loading locations along the wing. What this does is when we place the bags on, we can easily follow a predetermined span wise lift load distribution. This load distribution and bag layout was determined using a spreadsheet tool I created that tracks G loads, moment, and deformation of the test. We will be going over this tool in a future video and releasing it on the Dark Arrow Knowledge Base at a later date. This tool helped us keep track of everything as we were stacking bags onto the foam. The foam also determines the cord-wise distribution of the load, as we machined it so that the trailing edge of the foam is parallel with the quarter cord of the wing. The quarter cord of the wing is also the aerodynamic center. So this means if we place the bags on the foam with the trailing edge of the bag lined up with the trailing edge of the foam, that means our CG of our applied load will fall on the aerodynamic center or the quarter cord of the wing. Some of the other load tests you may have seen distribute their load span wise as well as cord wise. Uh, but for our tests and our wing dimensions and, and bag sizes, we determined that placing the CG of our applied load on the quarter cord would suffice. That's it for the stuff supporting the wing during the load test. Now let's take a look at how we measure displacement and twist of the wing under load. You may be asking, why would we want to measure displacement or twist? <clears throat> well, part 23.305 part A states, the structure must be able to support limit loads without detrimental or permanent deformation. One way to prove this is to set up extensometers around the wing. What we did is we repurposed 8020 framing from a different project in the shop and set up a rail system around the wing. Then we attached rulers at 20 different locations around the wing that we could then reference and measure displacement and twist under load. We started out with smaller metal six inch rulers and after an initial trial test, we found out that it would be easier and quicker to record the results if we used larger clear rulers. Let's take a look at our measuring locations on the wing. To start out, we have a measuring location here at the center spar of the wing. That's measured both forward and then one behind the wing for aft. Then we have one at the root of the wing forward and aft. Then we have where the flap meets the aileron forward and aft, at center aileron forward and aft. And finally, we have three here, forward, center, and aft for the wing tip. You may have noticed that we have multiple locations along the wing where we have two measurements at that same location forward and aft. This is how we measure twist. The last thing to say about the test setup is that our control surfaces were installed during the test. This is so that once the low was applied and the jack stands were lowered, we could come around and make sure that the control surfaces had full movement under load. Okay, so that's a high level overview of our proof load setup. This is the first time we've done a test like this, so we learned some stuff along the way like using clear rulers to make it easier to read the displacements and using cheat bars on the jack handles to make it easier and more controllable when we lowered and raised the jacks. Some stuff we're gonna do for our next wing load test is label the loading locations along the wing to make it even easier to follow our predetermined loading conditions and order new jacks or stabilize our current jacks a little more as they were an area we had to pay close attention to during the test. That's all for today about the load test setup. I hope you learned something. Don't worry, there's more videos coming about how the actual test itself went. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.